End-to-end -end testing checks that the combined parts of our application behave as we'd expect. It simulates the steps a user would take when using our app. As an example, let's consider a simple application that increases a counter when the user clicks on a button. Its test would take the following steps. First, it will open the browser and load the URL. Then, it presses the button that's supposed to increase the counter. It needs access to the counter value, so it'll select the element that holds that value and compare the new one to the starting one. And finally, it ends the test. This may seem like the only type of test we'll ever need, but trying to automate user behavior in a browser has some problems. The first issue is that end-to-end -end tests are slow. Some tests could take up to an hour or more to complete. End-to-end -end tests are also more difficult to debug. We can know which test failed, but not why. We'll have to manually retrace the steps of the test to find the bug. And end-to-end -end tests that rely on external services or APIs can fail because the service is down. There might not even be anything wrong with the app itself. Generally, end-to-end -end tests aren't the most reliable method of testing, and many developers don't use it at all. On the other hand, end-to-end -end testing can be very useful, because unlike unit and snapshot testing, it allows us to see how different parts of the app work together. If you want to follow along with the examples in this lesson, you're going to need a basic view app with the Cypress testing package installed. We haven't covered the newer view scaffolding options yet, where you can also add Cypress, so we'll use the view CLI for now. In the preset section, we want to manually select features. Then add E2E testing. For the testing solution, choose Cypress. The other options aren't relevant to the lesson, so you can choose whichever you prefer. The API for writing end-to-end -end tests is similar to the one for unit testing. In fact, most testing tools adopt similar features and syntax. Cypress uses a test interface borrowed from Mocha. That means we can use describe it syntax like we did with Jest. If we open the test file in the specs folder, we'll see a starter example with the describe it syntax. Inside the test block are two new statements. Cypress provides us with numerous global functions that help us test our application. These functions can be accessed through the Cy object with dot notation. The official Cypress documentation contains a list of all the functions you can use. We'll leave a link in the description below. Let's take a quick look at the two in our test. The visit method will visit the URL we specify as a string argument. And, because the CLI configured Cypress with a base URL, when we created the project, we can use relative URLs. That's why we only need to specify the slash instead of the full address to go to the home page. The contains method is our actual test. It looks for an element in the page we've navigated to and checks if a part of its content matches whatever we specify in the second argument. Cypress uses the standard JavaScript query selector, so we can use elements, classes, IDs, and so on to select an element. Unfortunately, the testing required depends on your project, and we can't cover every case. But, because the tests are so similar to Jest, it won't be difficult for you to write. We'll leave the test as is and show you how to run the suite. When the project generated, it created a new testing script in the package.json file. All we need to do is run the command to start the Cypress UI. Executing the command will tell Cypress to compile the application and start a development server. It'll also open the Cypress test runner. The test runner allows us to view and start the tests that are registered for our app. To start an individual test, click on its file name in the window. Cypress will then launch its custom browser and start running the test. Let's quickly take a look at the browser window. The window is divided into two parts. The pane on the left contains information about the test, as well as additional tools to interact with it. 
The operations log allows us to inspect each phase of the test by hovering over it. Doing that will update the page on the right and allow us to see what was happening in the test. A green check mark next to the test name in the log shows that it passed. The pane on the right is the browser and we'll be able to see Cypress performing the test while it runs. In the next video, we'll learn how to animate elements in a component with transitions. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.